QTV. I'm here with James E. Hedibo and his beautiful fiance, Brittany. James, now can you please tell me about this event? What is your foundation about? Yeah, well, this event, it's the NFL Draft Fundraiser, and it's in partnership with Beyond the Burrows and Hope Africa organization. And what we do is we provide scholarships for students of African descent to be able to attend higher education. So it really is, all we do is really give these students the push that they need to excel because they already have the mindset and the drive. So we just provide the financial tools for them to be able to do so. Now, when did you start this foundation? We actually started in 2008. But for the, the time back period till now, it really took us time to really figure out what we wanted to do in terms of structuring these scholarships. Because we didn't want to develop a platform where we just put a band-aid over issues. We wanted to do something where we perpetuate the cycle of education. So these kids, well and after we're gone and, and passed away, that the cycle is still going on and they're giving back. They're developing platforms where they give back to students. And the essays that we receive from these recipients in terms of how much they want to give back and what they plan on doing with their scholarships, it's, it's amazing. So it, it really is. It's a blessing. Now, with this kind of event, what is it that you're raising money, you're selling items, how is it, how are you conducting this event? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's all ticket purchase to get in the, in the door, and so everyone's, you know, supported both organizations and, and just being here, that's a first part of the participation. But then we also have a silent auction with great items. We have, you know, Ray Lewis autographed jersey. Um, we have Ed Reed signed cleats from Breast Cancer Awareness. Ray Rice signed jersey. I mean, the... the the, the items go on. I mean, we have tickets for Yankees games, you know. And, and so it's great. I mean, we have, we have partnerships and help from all over in every sport to be able to do this. Now tell me, what is the name of this foundation? So how is it people from the outside that's not in this event can give back? Yeah, it's, um, it's Hope Africa USA, which means helping our people excel. It's an acronym for that. And you can go to www.hopeafricausa.org and you have all the information from the, um, um, the, the students that we've given scholarships to, excuse me, as well of as well as our board members, as well as everything that we've done since 2008 to get to this point. And, you know, and definitely get involved. There's ways for you all to get involved, volunteer, make monetary donations, and, and, and help change lives, truly. Well, there you guys have it. We're here with James and Brittany, the beautiful Brittany. And make sure you guys give back, www.hopeafrica.com. Go on the website, and you're helping kids. We're trying to make everybody become a brand new person so they'll be able to give back. Until later, bye. Hey everybody, it's Q here with QTV. I'm here with Tuton Reyes, an NFL veteran. He's been in the NFL for 10 years, and now all he wants to do is give back to the community, give back to people, help kids grow and become a better person. Now, can you tell me about this foundation that is going on today? Yeah, the um, name of the organization is Beyond the Burrows. Uh, it's a national scholarship fund. We award up to $20,000 over four years to students with an unmet financial need. So basically, you don't have enough money to attend college. You have a college acceptance letter, don't know what's going to happen left, uh, excuse me, what's going to happen next. We come in and give them last dollars in, give them the money that they need remaining to attend college, and then they're able to go to school and pursue their dreams. So any student can apply to this? It's not designated to one country, it's all over? It's a national fund. We've had students from Tibet, um, Tibet apply, we had students from Korea apply, and from about, I say, 40 of the 50 states in, in America apply over the uh, last five years. So we're getting the word out there. Anyone can go to beyondtheboroughs.org, uh, fill out an application, and hopefully win a scholarship. Now, what's the maximum amount that someone can apply for? Well, it's up to $20,000 over four years. So uh, basically, it's up to $5,000 a year. $5,000 a year. Well, so with this organization, so it's any school, any student, anywhere around the world, now, how do they go about qualifying for this position? Well, you have to have at least a 2.5 GPA in high school. You have to have a college acceptance letter. And what you do is you go online uh, to beyondtheboroughs.org, fill out an application and a brief essay on why continuing education is important to you and on an obstacle that you've overcome. Once you do that, our board reviews the, app uh, the applications based on the need. We find out who needs it the most, and then uh, we send them to school. And how many scholarships do you give out a year? 
Uh, it depends on how much money we raise. So that's why we have events like tonight to hopefully raise as much money possible to give out as many as awards as possible. Currently, we serve 24 students across the country, and we've beginning our scholarship for this is our fourth year actually giving scholarships out. So it's only for high school students. College students may not apply. No, if you're in college as well, you have that college acceptance letter. And one year, you know, you're just kind of struggling that year. The financial aid didn't come through, or Pell Grant, and you need a scholarship. You can also apply at BeyondTheBurrows.org. He said it like five, six times, BeyondTheBurrows.org. I'm here with two times. And make sure you guys go to BeyondTheBurrows.org. Till later. Bye. Hey, everybody. It's Q here with QTV. I'm here with Imani Showalter from Basketball Wife LA. Now, Imani, tell me, what do you think about this whole organization and event that's going on today? Um, I think it's amazing, especially since both of the guys are from Nigeria. For them to come together and throw this amazing event, it's wonderful. Now, tell me about your experience on Basketball Wives. Um, Basketball Wives was an experience. <laughs> um, it was really nice um, as far as the friendships that I made with the girls. Um, you know, I still consider most of them like a sister. I talk to them all the time. To me, that was the best part of it. A lot of stuff that they didn't show of us bonding and the unity and the sisterhood that it created. Um, unfortunately, that was left out, but I still take that with me. Now, is it true? Because I always watch the reunions, and they always say that what you guys saw on TV is not what really happened. Is that really true? I mean, obviously it's us, and we're saying what we're saying, but, you know, there's a lot of editing involved in it, and, you know, you're getting, you know, a couple of minutes of, like, a three-hour conversation, and so it kind of creates a storyline, and I get it, because it has to be entertaining at the same time. So, you know, and, and honestly, reality TV is kind of set up to kind of entertain the masses. It's not about, you know, butterflies and hugs and kisses. You know, it has to be entertaining, and, you know, they do a very good job at making it entertaining. <laughs> now, now, do you believe that you know how the whole thing that's going on saying that reality shows are not real? Do you think it's 100% real since you've been on one? It's reality. <laughs> it's not real. It's reality. I mean, you see a lot of infighting and, you know, negative stuff going on. But behind the scenes, a lot of the girls, in my experience, have, you know, wonderful people, great people, people I still call sister and friends and I'm still in touch with. But I don't think that makes for good TV, so. <laughs> of course. If there's no fighting, there's no hair pulling, it's not real TV. But there you guys have it. I'm here with beautiful Imani. She said reality TV is reality. It's not real. <laughs> so till later. Bye. Hey, everybody. It's Q here with QTV. I'm here with the Mob Wives. I'm here with Renee, Ramona, Karen. We're having fun. We're at this event trying to support the kids. Now, tell me, do you guys, what do you guys think about this event today? Well, it's an absolute wonderful event. And anything to support children in education, we're all for. Do you guys agree with her? Oh, yeah. We're single moms, so we need all the support and anything regarding scholarships all the time. So Support the kids all the way. It's all about the kids. Are you guys going to encourage your kids to apply for the scholarship after high school? I'm going to make them encourage them to apply to any type of scholarship that's going to save me money. I have four of them, honey. <laughs> I'm done with school. Well, if they decide to go back. Oh, I wish he would go back to school and be like 12 all over because 19 ain't working for me. <laughs> what about you, Karen? Oh, absolutely. Definitely. My daughter, that's all her father tells her. Study, study, study to get that scholarship. So you guys hear that? Study, 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 get that scholarship. Now, ladies, tell me how was it like being on Mob Wives? Oh, how was it, girls? I think it was quite interesting. I think Ramona was absolutely wonderful on the reunion and took the reins and showed those showed those chicks exactly who's got the reins now. <laughs> so you just on the ground maybe. So what you just went all over and just told everybody what it was. I just told people that you know who needed to be told told the truth. So she the America got them. I schooled them, I taught them, I put I put the dogs down. <laughs> you guys hear that? You school people. You go to school and you school people at the same time. That's right. Scholarship and schooling. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know the whole thing behind reality TV. They say reality TV is not real. Do you guys believe that or you guys believe that your show is 100% real? My show is real, but the only thing that would happen is people on our show think that there's something that they're not. So in their mind, they're acting. They think that there's something. In reality, real life reality, they're nothing. They're peons. There's nothing fake about me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think we all saw my story unfold from 
surgery to my ex-husband. So if that was scripted, wow. Wow. <laughs> Academy Award, I need a check. <laughs> we're going to get her Oscar, Academy Award, everything, Golden Globe. That's what we're getting. Golden Gloves. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I can blame it on a script, but unfortunately it's all me. It's all real. Well, as we know, Mob Wives is 100% real. It's not like the other shows because these ladies keep it 100% real. Their husbands is going nuts. Of course they got to go nuts at the same time, right? Not a husband. I'm single. Looking. <laughs> yeah. She's looking. Make sure you guys hear that. <laughs> well, there you guys have it. I'm here with the beautiful Mob Wives. Make sure you tune in, watch your show, support kids, scholarships, make stay in school, and also school people at the same time. Till later, bye. Hey, everybody, it's Q here with QTV. I'm here with Mika Claxton. Mika, now the last time I seen you was at Mar the Matt Barnes event, was it? Yeah, probably for Blue Magazine. Yes. Now, what have you been up to since then? Well, first I have to say it's so good to see you again, Q. Um, a lot has gone on since then. Actually, I was at the Matt Barnes event supporting my partner, Zayvon and Mecca, of Pink Magazine and Blue Magazine. Um, together, we launched Elite Magazine, which is all sports all the time. It's real sexy. Um, it's really my husband's brainchild, but of course, you know, as women, we kind of like have to pick up all the slack, right, when he's not around. When he's taking a nap, I'm, I'm over there working. <laughs> But basically, Elite is for athletes by an athlete. Uh, my husband's idea is real simple. It's a locker room magazine. It's not something that you'll find on the newsstands, but it's very upscale, very sexy, very edgy. Kind of like ESPN meets GQ. You know, we have a little wives lounge section that we call it. So it's like, you know, a little high-end stuff. You know, we partnered with Ace of Spades, Armand de Brignac for our events. Like, it's really dope. It's, it's been really amazing. Now, this is an online magazine or an actual? Actually, it's a, um, a print magazine, so, you know, we're doing big things, baby. No, <laughs> no but it's a print magazine, um, and actually, the magazine and a couple of the other projects that we are working on put the interest of more positive production companies, so I'm excited about some things that we have in the works now. Before, it's like, you know, no, I don't want the same old formula back on TV. I need, I need to show, like, you know, how we make money and how we actually are able to live the lifestyle we live and show you guys a little bit more of the real, but. Now, where can everybody get this Elite Magazine? Well, Elite Magazine is a, it's an, um, a locker room magazine, so you really can't get it. But we will be doing some um, fan experiences at our photo shoots. We'll be doing a lot of things, just like you know, at our private dinners, try to get fans involved. Um, you know, we've shot, we've shot a, some cool people, with Serge Ibaka. We just had an event with him, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook. We shot Bryant McKenney, Super Bowl she champion. Name. She got just a little name. Damn, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> no, we, you know, Bryant McKenney of the Super Bowl <laughs> champion Raven. No, we've shot some great people, so I'm excited about it. I really, I mean, business makes me, you know, I love, yep. I love, I love it. I love entrepreneurship, so. You see, well, there you guys go. We're at an event. They're giving out scholarship for people to go to school, stay in school. And after you have school, you're doing your own business. You're making your own money. No worry about anybody providing for you. You do it all for yourself. And Mika's a great example of how to do it by yourself. And look gorgeous at the same time. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but there you guys have it. Till later. Bye. Hey, everybody. It's Q here with QTV. I'm here with a beautiful international model, Clarissa Rosario. Clarissa, now tell me, what are you doing in life? I am traveling the United States of America right now. <laughs> um, I'm currently with uh, Monster Energy as a spokesmodel, so pretty much every weekend I'm in a different city. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, doing appearances and signings, and this week I'm here uh, for NFL Draft Week hosting a huge event that I did last night with Antrell Rowe from the New York Giants, so nice. very exciting. Now, as an international model, you're traveling all over the world. Where, where are you exactly from? I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts, but I live in Los Angeles. Nice. Now, what international state have you been to? I have been everywhere, but my favorite place that I've been to is Dubai. Dubai? Everybody always says that. What is it about Dubai? Like, I know it's so pretty, it's glamorous. Like, what is it really about Dubai that bring, that basically sucks everybody in? Dubai is like 20 years ahead of the United States of America. I mean, you go there and you're just in awe of how 
beautiful the architecture is, the cars, the nightlife, the cleanliness, the people. You don't see any poverty over there, and there's things that you don't see over in the United States, like there's an indoor um, a snowboarding skiing place inside the indoor. mall. Indoor. And, um, I'm going to Dubai. <laughs> I'm going back to Dubai. <laughs> now, when you were in Dubai, what is it that you were doing out there? I was actually out there for my birthday. I went there on a vacation, and uh, I've always wanted to go to Dubai. That's the one place in the world, and I went there, and I must say, it surpassed all my expectations. Well, I'm going there for my birthday in November. Everybody, listen, my birthday's in November. When was your birthday? June 28th, so it's coming up, Cancer. She's coming out. <laughs> I'm November, we're going to be in Dubai. Now, tell me about this event. What brought you to this event today? You know, anything to do with charity, I love coming out and supporting, and, you know, especially giving back to the kids. I have my own foundation that um, I just officially launched. It's called, oh, okay. yeah, it's called the Ali Mo Foundation. It's uh, benefiting uh, pediatric brain cancer awareness. So um, when I heard about this event during draft week, I said, you know, I'd love to come out and show some support. Wow, now, what is it that you normally do with your foundation? How do you raise money for it? Well, we just launched it. So yeah, so it's brand new, yeah. Um, but um, I can tell you how it came about. Um, a little girl by the name of Allie Rodriguez um, just passed away um, in June of this past year from uh, brain cancer, and her and her family came into my life. And um, I really wanted to help raise awareness, and I uh, decided to name a foundation after her. So, wow, that's amazing. That's really, really amazing. Now, since it's just launched, do you have a website yet? I do. Um, you can find me on my website, CarissaRosario.com. My Twitter. I'm always answering back to anyone who tweets me at Carissa Rosario, and I am on Instagram at Carissa Rosario. Yeah, that Carissa Rosario. Everything Carissa Rosario. So if you want to give to her foundation, Carissa Rosario, hit her up on Instagram, Twitter, everything. She'll respond back to you. We're here. We're having fun. Till later, you guys. Bye. Hey, everybody. It's Q here with QTV. I'm here with Elle Barner. She is a musician. She is this beautiful artist. Now, Barner, tell me about your journey coming to become a musician and an artist. Um, you know, it really, it wasn't easy. As easy as it was, it wasn't easy because I got signed kind of like Cinderella style. I was discovered and working in Kochek and everything happened so fast and even still, it, it takes a minute, you know, to do what you want to do, but I'm um, working hard and, and staying strong and, and doing my thing. Now, as a 24-year-old, how do you feel about this whole organization with Hope Africa, and the whole Beyond the Burrows giving scholarships to students? I think it's so important. I mean, going to college myself, um, I know that I needed help when I was in school. I needed to feel like people cared and, and took time out of their lives, from their fabulous lives, to, to give back to students. So it's wonderful. What kind of quote do you have for those out there who are really struggling and it's hard to get scholarships and they're like ready to drop out of school and everything? You can have anything you want if you're willing to work for it. Well, said it from herself, El Barner, you can have anything you want if you work for it. She was discovered in Coke Check. Like, that's so amazing. Well, you guys, we're here at the foundation helping raise money, helping everybody in Africa, helping students get scholarships to go to school. Till later.